Hey GED students, uh, we're working on a problem that was sent in here by GED student um, Natalie she, on uh, Facebook. She was wondering how to find the volume of this solid. So before we can find the volume, uh, we need to know what type of a shape this is. This is a cylinder, a cylinder. Uh, so a solid is a three-dimensional shape and a cylinder is a three-dimensional shape that has a circle on either end and then uh, we go from a circle end to circle end at nice right angles and it makes like what you think of as like maybe a tube or a water bottle kind of a shape, uh, that kind of a shape. This one's lying on its side, but it's still a cylinder, okay? So we do not need to have memorized the steps to finding the volume of a cylinder because that is on your GED formula sheet. So if you take a look at your GED formula sheet, under the volume and surface area, a section, you'll see the volume of a cylinder formula. So look up cylinder, and you want the formula that starts with V for volume, and then you put V equals pi R squared H. V equals, I'm just copying it down from the formula sheet. I do not have this memorized. And then all I need to do, I actually do have this memorized, but you don't have to, okay? Um, so, and then now all you have to do here is plug in what you know into the formula. So let's see, V stands for volume. Volume is the thing we're finding, so it's we don't know what it is. It's a mystery. It will remain a V. Pi is a number. Now, if you're not aware of this, pi is a known number, not a mystery number. It's not like X or something where we don't know what it's equal to. We do know what it's equal to. It's this long, ugly number like 3.14159, yada, yada, yada. It goes on forever. But I don't want to use a number that goes on forever, so I'm going to use a rounded version of pi, an approximation. I'm going to call that 3.14. Next thing I need to plug in after pi, it said take r. Now notice how that pi and that r are shoved together with nothing in between them in the formula. They're multiplying. So I'm going to get a parentheses out. And r stands for radius. Now be really, really careful. This is where this problem will trick you and where it's probably, I'm guessing, tricking Natalie. The radius of a circle goes from the center of a circle to its outside edge. Now, I told you that this end, even though it doesn't really look very much like a circle because it's kind of distorted, is the circle. But notice that line that they've marked on there. That line that they've marked on there goes all the way across the circle. It's not a radius, it's a diameter. You don't want all the way across the circle, you only want half the way across the circle. So take that diameter of six and split it in half. Six, half of six is three, or six divided by two is three, so the radius here is three. Plug that in and that's supposed to be squared. The radius was supposed to be squared, so I put a little square symbol on there. Then the next thing I see is an H for height, again, shoved up, so I'm gonna be putting this in parentheses. And I know it doesn't look like a height because this cylinder is on the ground, but be careful. It doesn't have to do with which way the cylinder's lying, what's the height. The height of a cylinder is always that line that goes from circle to circle. Again, the line that goes from circle end to circle, this line is the height. So my H is gonna be five. Great, now let's plug this entire expression because we're too lazy to, tie, to do this by hand into our TI. And here we go, I get 3.14 times, I open up a parentheses to put times, I put in the three, I close the parentheses, and then I need the square. On the TI calculator, your square you get by pressing the X squared button. So I'll hit X squared, open up another parentheses and type five. And then I get 141.3. Now the directions that Natalie gave me, I didn't copy them all down, but they did ask me to round it to the nearest whole unit, whole unit. So I'm gonna round right here at the decimal place. So I'm gonna call that about 141, uh, in this case, inches cubed. But I think Natalie's example didn't even have inches in it. So Natalie, you would just put 41 cubic units, 141, sorry. So that is the correct answer here, 141 cubic inches. If you have any questions about this or any other GED math concept, be sure to drop it in the comments and I'll do my best to answer it.